Hey YouTube, Electric Adventures here with the next episode in Electric Adventures The Games. Um, we're still on program pack 9. Uh, we've already done Artillery Fire, Tennis and Number Puzzle. This time we have Towers of Hanoi. So this is basically when I was in a, um, a, a puzzle phase. So Towers of Hanoi is a classic um, puzzle where you've got to try and get all of the discs uh, the round, they're supposed to be round discs on pegs um, from one side of the, um, from the left hand spike to the right hand spike but when you move a piece you can't put a larger one on a smaller one, you can only put a smaller one on a larger one and there's a certain number of moves you need to do that so it's a classic puzzle so um, I take uh, from memory we've got to put in the um, spike levels like that so we want to put from there to there and then we can move from there to there so you've sort of got to do a, um, a shuffle to move the pieces now we can't we need to get that second piece on top so we need to move this one back to here and then we can move this one to here and then this one can go back here and now we use that one as the top one and we continue shuffling from there so um, this is a puzzle that can actually take quite a while to uh, get the hang of and it gets more complex the further you get um, down it I'll just get a little bit further just to give you an idea so each time you do it the number of moves Increases, so we're doing not doing too bad. Um, I think I wasted one move there by not concentrating. So we've done over half the tower now. And you know, you just basically got to shuffle them all so you get the entire tower from the left to the right. And that's basically the game. So it is a short puzzle game. Um, it has, um, you know, fairly convincing graphics and everything like that. So it's not too bad. So let's go. I'll get set up and we can go and have a look at the source code together. Okay, so I've got set up. Let's have a look at how long our program is. There we go, it's only 15 lines long, and I'm sure this one with a little bit of optimization could probably enter one of those 10 line basic competitions. So this is going to be really short, this video. So let's clear our screen and work our way through. Okay, so first thing is our very common, very first line, we clear a bit of space. Um, we set our basic color, set our screen mode. We make all the variables integers to give ourselves a bit of speed. We define our random function and we seed that with the current value in time. And we open our handle to the screen. That print line has pretty much been the same for just about every single program. So line 20, um, set exactly the same color, same screen mode. We dim an array, so eight by three elements. Uh, we put the word towers of Hanoi in a string. We set a particular point and a color and then we print that string we set another point which is one pixel off and print it again that gives us the slightly thicker text that you see now line 30 uh, we go through our array and empty it out to make sure it's all zero uh, then we set a, um, a variable d equals 15 and we go through various x values Oh, and set the um, so what we're doing we're setting the um, this each one of the discs has a different size and they're all going to be in the first column so um, we're setting those first you know the initial positions of the stack of discs uh, and go sub 130 uh, possibly draw something we'll have a look at that in a sec so line 40 uh, we draw a uh, fairly large box um, 44 down the bottom, that's our green section down the bottom. Uh, we set a point, set a colour, and then we print the word move from down the bottom. Okay, 
and then we wait for keyboard input. We make sure that keyboard input is one of the numbers from 1 to 3, otherwise we loop around. If it is 1 to 3, we print it on the screen um, and we put that value in the, uh, the variable f. So val takes the numeric value of what has been entered. So that would contain the actual number 1, 2, and 3 rather than the string 1, 2, or 3. Line 60, um, we um, draw the green box again and we print the words move to and we wait for input from the user again and we only accept uh, the values 1 to 3 and we get that into so f is from t is 2 uh, line 80 uh, we go through each of the um, slots the seven slots in each of the in the ca the stack from the from um, and see if there is a um, a spare slot in there oh no one that doesn't have a value in there which means there's a disk there um, otherwise we've, if there's no disk in that stack to move then we go around to 40 and start again and go back to entering the from value um, and then our m value is the is the part uh, is the level in the stack we want to grab the disk from then line 90 does the same thing but this is where we're moving to we, this time um, Eight equals eight. Okay, yes, we want to make sure. I would have thought that would have been looking for non zeros, but anyway, I've confused myself in my own code here. There really isn't a lot left. Right, now each of the disks has a size, and so we want to make sure that the two size is not. Um, smaller than the from size because that means you're putting a larger disk on a smaller disk and that's not allowed and we play a sound I didn't actually hear any sounds when we um, played that before so um, maybe it'll come out in the recording <laughs> um, so that's one, and one more validation then line 110 so now we actually go and assign that disk size to the two stack and we set the from one to zero because that disk's gone uh, Q must be our number of turns we've done uh, go sub 130 which we can now have a look that goes and basically redraws the stacks in the new positions um, and then we've got if t13 so the third position doesn't equals 3 then go back to 40 that means we haven't solved the puzzle so what we're looking for um, is the piece that is three wide being on the top position of the right pyramid that means you've finished the puzzle and line 120 basically draws a thing on the screen that says you've won and how many moves you did in it waits for a little while and then goes back and reruns the program so as you can see it is a really really simple uh, program that achieves you know a pretty good little puzzle I mean look uh, let's face it this particular puzzle there is only one way to solve it you can juggle back and forth so the number of moves might be a little different um, but it was an interesting probably an extra thing I thought the other games on that program pack were a little small and it needed one more game to um, to pad it out so very simple one uh, this one to finish off program pack 9 that was a reasonably popular program pack uh, not quite as popular as the others but um, anyway there's more program packs to go so number 10 will be the next one um, so I uh, hope you to see you soon in the next video. I'm Electric Adventures, thanks to all my subscribers, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.